How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another old school Q&A summary. Sorry for the late one this week. I'd like to make up for it all with an offer. If this video can hit 1k likes, then next week's video will be uh, Ray William Johnson's equals three theme. On this week's Q&A, we had Mod Gambit hosting, joined by mods Kieran, Ash, West, and Acorn. Acorn is a new addition to the old school team and will be working as a community manager. She was previously a part of the anti-cheating team banning bots. She said that if she could do anything without a poll, it would be a clan system, and the update she's most excited for in 2019 is warding. After briefly saying hello, Acorn then gave up her spot for Savage King Bruno. Next up, Gambit Gambit showed off the quest tab rework made by Gentle Tractor and said that it would be included in this week's content poll. And after covering a bit about the game update, which is already live, the team jumped into the questions. Busy asked, when are we going to see the Hisidious rework, which Mod West teased in October? Mod West responded by showing off the rework. I've decided to uh, make this a bit, a bit grander. I've got some statues uh, representing each of the houses of Karend. Outside of uh, the councillor's houses, we've got this new little park area. So down here we've got a nice little park and like a little memorial to, I don't know, some long dead king. Here are the new houses for the councillors. So, the, previously the councillors were sort of just all over the place, but we wanted to sort of bring them all together and make it, bit, make it, you know, make it a bit more sense and make the castle feel a bit more established in the world. And I've also lifted the castle up a little bit to give it a bit more of an imposing feel. This is mostly the same, it's just slightly higher with this wall around the outside. And the mess has had a severe reduction in size. And, uh, and the entrances are slightly easier to get into as well. And south of the mess, Watson's house is still a thing, but it's had quite a bit of a makeover. He's now, you know, he's got some building you know, rooms, you know, as you'd expect in a, in a house, he's got like a diner, a kitchen, and he's even got like a, like a bed as well. So now I'm going to head over to the east a little bit. So this is where the Hasidious kitchen is, where you get your, your lovely boosts. And again, what I've been trying to do with all these buildings is trying to give them a unique feel. Because the main issue with Hasidious was lots of the buildings sort of felt copy and pasted. It was quite difficult to really tell where you were when you were walking around. So the idea here is to sort of give it its own sort of unique vibe. And, you know, just bring space between all the buildings as well and sort of give it that sort of old school feel. So what I've attempted to do here is take all the sort of important buildings and houses around, sort of just bring them all closer together. And a nice little central area for the market. So these are where all the stores you'd expect to find. We've got the bank here. Uh, some other things just lying around. We've got the pub. Gambit said that the rework will be polled soon and will hopefully arrive in March. James asked if we could be allowed to smith our own pickaxes. The mods didn't feel too strongly either way about this. It wouldn't be a great help to anyone as the pickaxes can just be bought from a shop, but it also wouldn't hurt to add them into the skill. Wild asked if a counter for Lizardman Shaman kills could be added, and the team gave this a hard maybe. A user asked about the expected experience rates for killing Zolcano, the skilling boss which will be a part of Prish Thinnis. Gambit said that the skills which will get experience are runecrafting, mining, and smithing, but said that this skilling boss is not intended as a way to train these skills. It's going to be more focused around the rewards, and you'll only get a few thousand experience per hour in these skills. Breakfast asked if there are any plans to finish off old quest storylines, in particular Rise of the Red Axe. Ash said that he sees no reason why more old storylines couldn't be finished off, pointing out that there tends to be more interest in the desert quests than anything else. Mario asked if the team could consider adding distractions and diversions to old school. Kieran said that he likes distractions and diversions which work similarly to clue scrolls, where they give you a way to break up the grind but don't force you to play a certain way. The rest of the mods all seem to agree that it would come down to how they are implemented and making sure they don't make you feel restricted in how you play. Tig asked if the winter tod damage could be rescaled so it doesn't punish higher level players. Kieran said that the team have discussed this and thought about replacing hit points with a warmth meter. The mods all seemed keen on making it fair for all players. Lunch Guy asked if the beekeeper random could be disabled on desktop like it has been on mobile. Ash said that he would like for a female version of the beekeeper outfit to be made so that it could be given as a reward. He added that there was a change made to the beekeeper random in around 2009 to make it easier to solve. These changes could make the random more worthwhile. Jimmy asked if the speed of the bone grinder at the Ectofunters could be increased, as the Wilderness Altar has made every other method for training prayer obsolete. The mods objected to the thought that the Wilderness Altar has made other methods obsolete, pointing out that Gilded Altars and Insult Heads get plenty of use. They did, however, agree that Ecto doesn't see much use. They spoke about improving the diary reward from the NPC Robin, who currently converts a set number of bones to bone meal every day. Hovajita asked if Maces 
short swords, battle axes, and warhammers could be rebalanced to make them more viable. Wes said that he thought that battle axes and warhammers are fine, but maces and short swords don't really have a role. The mods were unsure about how they could rebalance these items so they would all see more use without impacting on the classic experience of old school. Hovagita also asked if the team would consider making fletching free to play. Ash said that he's curious what the community think about a skill being made free to play, and if they are open to it, why fletching? He threw out an alternate suggestion of agility, as there are a lot of issues with run energy at lower levels which could be resolved with agility being more available. The team ran a straw poll and 68% of voters said yes they would like to see agility made free to play. A chat pleb asked if trimmed skill capes could get a toggle to untrim them. Gambit suggested giving players this option but only on the first skill cape which they earned. But Ash was quick to mention that the first 99 a player achieves is not currently being tracked, so this would only be available to players who get their first 99 going forward. Either way, the chat wasn't keen on this. And the final question of the stream, a chat pleb asked if the Legends Guild dungeon could be given a purpose. The mods love the idea of doing this and they are open to suggestions for what could go down there. And that is all for this week's summary. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.